Hey everyone, it's me Nita and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out some new beanies from AJ Blanks. I will be adding beanies to my Etsy shop and to my website. So today I'm working on a faux Chanel style embroidery design. I'm hoping that it turns out good on these beanies. Um, if they do, I'm going to be adding a bunch of different faux varsity letters and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and let's just get started on these beanies. I'm going to show you the embroidery file and how the file is set up to do the faux Chanel. I'm going to show you the supplies and the beanies that I'll be using. So let's just dive in because I'm really excited to test out this new method to me. Okay, so I have a bunch of the AJ Blank beanies. I already tested out just like a basic personalized beanie with a varsity font. I will be offering these on my website and on my Etsy shop, so um, I have to spend some time listing these, but I have these ones already done, and then she has a bunch of different colors that you can choose from. So I got um, like this light pink, red, cream color. I'm gonna do like a Valentine's Day themed beanie as well, so um, I'm gonna be making a bunch of samples. She also has lavender, black, this really cute sage color, um, and then these two colors, and then I do believe that's it for the colors, so I did get every color. I took photos of all the colors for the beanies so customers can like select which color they would like. Beanies are a really easy and quick stitch out. Um, you can charge between like 20 to 25 for beanies, maybe even more. Um, so they are just like a really quick way to make money with your embroidery machine. So I really do recommend stitching out beanies. So these are the beanies that I'll be stitching onto today. I'm not gonna stitch out onto all of them. I'm gonna do maybe like four of the different colors to use for photos, for listing photos. I think that should be like a good amount of like samples to show customers how they look on different colored beanies. Um, I'm also gonna be using glitter heat transfer vinyl. I like to use sizer. So I have a bunch of different colors because I want the faux Chanel varsity letters to look glitter glitter y. <laughs> so I have a bunch of different colors. So I have white, pink, gold, and black. I think those all would look really good. Um, I could also use like a red glitter as well, and I think that would look really cute on like the pink or the screen color for like a Valentine's Day themed one. So yeah, so I'm really excited to get started on these. I will be using my three industrial embroidery machines. Now you could do this project very easily on a single needle. Um, I wish I had a working single needle embroidery machine to show you guys um, how to do beanies. I do have another video using my single needle embroidering onto like baby beanies. So it's the same concept. So I'll make sure and leave that video linked for you guys if you wanna see how to embroider beanies using a single needle. But I'm gonna be using my Ricoma and my two buys and I should be able to quickly stitch out these samples. I'm hoping I can get all this done within an hour. So let's go look at the embroidery file and then I'll show you guys how to hoop these and get them loaded onto the machine and all that. Okay guys, so I am using Sew Up Pro and I just wanna talk about the design a little bit. The design comes with five steps and with the first step, it's just um, a placement stitch. This is for you to add your HTV. Um, I would have the machine stop place down my HTV and continue on to the next step, which is just like a top stitch. After the top st stitch, it's just an outline stitch and you can have the machine stop after this point and you can cut the HTV or you can just allow the machine to con continue stitching out to the next step, which is um, just another top stitch for like the letter. I would use a different color than the background. Um, so for example, with this one, the background's gonna be white. I would use this portion of the letter to be black, so there is some contrast. And for the final step, it's just another layer of stitches, so I would just do four and five, um, the same exact color. And that's it for this design, so let's go stitch it out. Okay guys, so I have the beanie colors picked out. I also have the glitter that I plan on using for that specific beanie along with the letter 
that I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to do one letter that's like two and a half inches. Um, it's just a basic varsity letter. So something super easy. Should be a quick stitch out. So um, yeah, I have all this ready to go. Now I just need to hoop it. And I'm actually just going to run my Rekoma and one of my buys because this buy, I have the arms um, spread out further because I was using my 8x13 Mighty Hoop so I don't want to have to change out the arms just to be able to do this project so I'm just gonna run these two machines because these ones are ready to go so I have the letters already loaded onto the machine I'm mostly just gonna be doing um, a bunch of A's because I am going to be gifting these to people um, after I make them and take photos of them um, so yeah, so I'll be gifting these to people, so I have a bunch of A's that I have to make, so I'm going to have the Recoma dedicated to just doing A's, and I have the letter M and L on for this machine, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how these turned out, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get my tearaway stabilizer and, and my water soluble stabilizer, I'll be using both of those two types of stabilizers, and then I'll also be using my five and a half inch Mighty Hoop. I have um, the five and a half by five and a half inch Mighty Hoops. Um, these work perfect with, with doing beanies. Um, I do have to have two different sets though of Mighty Hoops, one for the Recoma and one for the Buy. The Recoma, the hoops are a little bit wider, or the brackets, I should say, are a little bit wider. So, um, I do have a buy set of Mighty Hoops and a Recoma set of Mighty Hoops. Also, if you guys are in need of getting some Mighty Hoops and want free shipping, um, check out my link down below and use my code to get free shipping. Okay, so when hooping my beanies, the Mighty Hoops will separate like this. Let's go ahead and let's start with, I wanna start with this one first. I'm really obsessed with the sage color. Hopefully this one's a good seller. I think the sage color will be. Um, a popular color. So first thing that I do when embroidering on beanies is I flip them inside out and then I'm going to take one of my tearaway stabilizer, put it inside of the beanie. I'm going to take my bottom piece to my Mighty Hoop and put it inside of the beanie. And then I like to hoop my beanie onto the Mighty Hoop like halfway. So I will use a full piece of stabilizer but I won't put the beanie completely onto the entire hoop. I just will go about halfway just like that make sure it looks even and then on your mighty hoops you have like these little dots I like to use these dots and line them up with the bottom of the beanie but before I snap that on I do need to use a piece of water soluble stabilizer so I actually messed up here you'll have to add the water soluble stabilizer after you add the HTV You'll need to heat press or iron the HTV after embroidery and the water soluble stabilizer will prevent the adhesive on the HTV to stick to the beanie. So it's best to add it after the glitter HTV. Line it up with the bottom of the beanie and kind of center it the best you can. You can adjust it if you need to. That's how it looks. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the machine. I'm gonna do a test run of just one beanie first to see if I even like this font and like how it turns out. So hopefully everything turns out good so I can stitch out the rest of these beanies and have a good nice collection when I launch beanies onto my website. Okay, so I have my opening right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it onto the machine. And I'm gonna make sure and pull that bottom part of the beanie and make sure that it is out of the way so it doesn't get bunched up and sewn on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trace the design and I don't have to flip the design at all because I have my beanie turned inside out. Okay, so I'm gonna press the trace button on my Recoma. Now you also have the same feature on your single needle so when you have your beanie hooped, you're gonna have to float it uh, and I would still do a trace so you can see where exactly the design will be on the beanie. So you do have that feature on any single needle that you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and trace it now. And see it's too high so I'm going to have to lower it. I want the top of that letter to be like at the very top of the beanie. I'm going to do it one more time just to double check. 
go just a little bit lower and then I think that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and press go on the machine. Hopefully everything turns out good. Okay, so it did an offset. That's where it stops the machine and pushes out the design. So if you have like an applique, you can lay the applique down. So there's the applique, I'm gonna press go again. Making sure that that beanie is still not caught up under the hood. Okay, so I'm hoping that I could just rip this top part off. Okay, so I'm gonna clean it up once it's done. Now it's gonna go ahead and lay the black stitches down. So as you can see, I still have a little bit left. Um, but once it's done doing the final stitches, I'll tear that piece off. I don't wanna tear it right now just because I don't want the beanie to shift at all. Um, so I'll clean it up once it's all done. Okay, so I just pulled the beanie off the machine. Now I need to turn it right sides out again. It'll look like this, but then you just have to flip it over, adjust it, and I think I could have went a little bit lower, or a little bit higher, I should say, for the design. All right, I, I like how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch out the rest. I'm just gonna make sure that I get the top of this letter at the very top, top, top of this design. Um, the smallest that this, this design had was two and a half inches. Um, for beanies, I wouldn't go anything higher than two and a half inches. And because these are kids beanies, I probably would go around two inches. But I think once I get the letter at the top of the beanie, a little bit closer to the edge, it will sit a little bit better. But I really like how this turned out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the beanies hooped and have my two machines running all together. So I'm gonna quickly just hoop all of these and get them all started at the same time um, to kind of help create like a little workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.
Okay guys, so I finished up all of the beanies. I really love how these turned out. I decided to do like a red and pink version just for Valentine's Day. A simple little themed beanie. Um, but I really love how these turned out. I can't wait to get these listed. By the time you guys see this video, I will have them listed on my website. Um, so if you would like to purchase, um, I'll have my website linked in the description for you guys. But I'm going to go ahead now and take listing photos of these beanies and get them listed. Alright guys, well that's going to be it for this tutorial. I am going to have another beanie video because I am launching a ton of beanies onto my website. Uh, so definitely make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so whenever I do upload my second beanie video, you will not miss it because I'm going to be trying a bunch of new methods that I haven't tried before on beanies and I'm going to be listing so many cute designs onto my website to really do a big launch for these beanies. So um, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!